This video is part two for problem 4-5 in our textbook. We've already journalized the transactions from July 1st through the 14th. And so this video will be a little bit shorter as we journalize the transactions from the 17th through the end of the month. Then we will start with the second required number um, on the instructions, post the journal to a ledger of four column accounts. Looking at the 17th then, the 17th of July, you'll notice we're now on a second page. So up here at the top of the journal, it says page two. Because it's a new page, we've inc included the year at the top and then the month as well. You'll notice the rest of the page does not include the year and the month because those carry down. It's assumed that it's still 2000 Y12 and July 7th, excuse me, and July. So looking at July 17th, it says we recorded cash from clients for fees earned during the period. So we received some cash. And why did we receive that cash? Because we earned some fees. We did whatever it is that we do. And so our revenues, there it is, fees earned, is also going to increase. Our cash increases by $94.50. Our revenues also increase by that same amount. As we saw in the previous video, all journal entries must include at least two account titles, one to be debited, which is always listed first, followed by the one to be credited. Sometimes, as we saw in the first video, you might have what's called a compound entry rather than a simple entry like we have here. A simple entry has just one debit, one credit. A compound entry has multiple debits or and or credits. On the 18th, we paid cash for supplies. So what do we have now that we did not have before? We have some additional supplies. Most companies handle their supplies account by adding any purchase supplies in directly into that supplies account, which is an asset. And then at the end of the month, they reconcile any supplies that have been used. We'll see that when we get to adjusting entries later on. It says we paid cash for those supplies. So cash, our asset cash is going to go down. We used some of our cash. On the 20th, we recorded services provided on account. And so our accounts receivable is an asset account that's going to go up by 66.50 and our fees earned that revenue account is also going to go up we provided services our customers just haven't paid us yet on the 24th we received cash from some clients for fees earned and so our cash would go up on the 24th by $4,000. And again, that's for fees earned. The revenue is also going to increase by $4,000. We received cash from clients on account on the 26th. So our cash is going to go up by $12,000 and our accounts receivable is going to go down. The customers did owe us that money, but they no longer owe us. So the asset accounts receivable is going to go down. We paid our receptionist again, and so we're going to report that salaries expense of $1,750. And because we were paying the receptionist, our cash goes down by that same amount. We paid our telephone bill, so we're going to report utilities expense or telephone expense or something like that. Let's see what we have. Um, hmm. How about miscellaneous expense? I don't see another one that's more specific than that. So we're going to use miscellaneous expense. And because we paid the bill, our cash is going to go down. We'll do the same thing for the electric bill. Again, we don't see anything that's more specific than miscellaneous expense. So we will record that and we paid that bill we recorded cash from clients for fees earned for the last week of the month on the 31st so our cash is going to increase 
and our revenue is going to increase by the same amount. On the 31st, we also recorded some services that were provided on account for the rest of July. And so our accounts receivable is going to go up and our fees earned is going to go up by $3,000. And we paid some dividends. So we're going to report the dividend, the cost of the dividend of $12,500. And we paid those. So our cash is going to go down. So dividends are distributions of the earnings of a company to the stockholders. In this case, this company has just one stockholder, and that's Steffi, the man who started the company back at the beginning of July. So this is how he gets paid. This is how he takes some of the earnings from the company, and that then becomes a, um, a reduction in our retained earnings. It represents earnings of the company that were not retained. Now, I just want to show you a couple entries of for number three, or sorry, excuse me, for number two, post the journal to a ledger of four column accounts. The ledger is already set up for us here. You'll notice that we have the name of the account, the number of the account. Um, all of these accounts are brand new. They don't have any opening balances, but for a continuing business, you would see an opening balance carrying forward from the previous month. And you'll notice that we have ledger accounts set up for all of the accounts that we're going to use. And some of them have more lines than others, simply because that's what we know that we need for this problem. So again, the templates give us a bit of guidance to know if we're doing this correctly, doing it well. So I just want to show you how to journalize a couple, and then you can try the rest on your own, and I will do mine outside of the video. So we're going to start with the very first transaction that we entered back here on July 1st. We take this line by line. So the first line is the cash account and the second, um, the cash account is going to be debited $13,500. So I go down to the cash account and on July 1st, we debited $13,500. And so over here in the, the right-hand set of columns, these columns are for us to update our balance. So if we had a zero balance before and we added $13,500, then our account now has a debit balance of $13,500. We posted this to account 11. So we go back up to the ledger and we put in the posting reference for column 11. Now this came from journal page one, see page one. And so when we put that entry into the ledger, we should put a posting reference. Where did it come from? It came from page one in the journal. Sometimes you'll see that as a J1 because it came from journal page one. Uh, in this class, we're not using special journals. So the only journal we use is a general journal. Now we go to the second line. We can tell we did the first line because it already has the posting reference in there for us. So we go to the second line, accounts receivable, and it's a debit of $20,800. So we come down to accounts receivable. It came from page one. It was a debit of $20,800. We come over here to update our balance. It had a zero balance before. The company's just being started, and so our new balance is 20,800 debit. Then we come back up here and we put in, it went to, whoops, sorry, it went to account number 12. So I put in the wrong account number and it told me that I put in the wrong account number. Again, these templates are helpful for us when we're just learning. In the real world, nobody hands you a template that has all of their right answers already encoded in there. Supplies, debit of $3,200. So we come down to the supplies account. We would have to enter the date there. This came from journal page one, and it is a debit of $3,200. Come over here to update our balance. It had a zero balance. Now it has a $3,200 balance. Whoops, and what 
that was account number 14. So we come back here, put them in account number 14 and move on. For office equipment, a debit of 7,500. So we come down to office equipment. It came from journal page one, 7,500, oops, $7,500. And the new balance would be $7,500. That was for account 18. So we come back up into the general journal and put in account number 18. And the last line of this first transaction is a credit to common stock for $45,000. So we come down in our general ledger till we find common stock. It came from page one. It was a credit of 70, sorry, was it 45,000, $45,000. And we come over here and put in our credit of 45,000 as the updated balance. That went to account number 31. So you'll notice that accounts always appear in a specific order in the general ledger. And that is assets, liabilities, and then equity. And within the equity accounts, we have contributed capital, such as common stock, we have retained earnings, we have dividends, then we have revenues and expenses. So accounts should always be in that specific order. And you can tell that from the, the way the numbered, so assets are starting with one in this problem and an equity account starts with a three. Let's do one more together and we'll journalize this second transaction from July 1st. Excuse me, we've already journalized it. We're going to post this to the general ledger. So we can see prepaid rent was a debit of 4,800. So we come down to prepaid rent. It is from journal page one. It's a debit of, whoops, 4,800. And we update the balance. This went to account 15. So I come back up to my journal and enter where did it go? We posted it to account 15. And then the second line of that transaction is a credit to cash for 4,800. So we come down to the cash account. It's still from journal page one and it's a credit of 4,800. So if we had a debit balance of 13,500, and we used or spent 4,800 of that, our new updated balance would be 8,700. The way we find a balance in an account, as you learned in a previous chapter, is you compare the debits to the credits, you subtract the smaller number from the larger, and the account will have the balance of the larger total. So we had 13,500 in debits, 4,800 in credits, we subtract and find the difference of 8,700, and that is a debit balance. I'm going to stop there for this video, and outside of the videos, I'm going to continue posting till I've posted all of these transactions, and you should do that yourself as well if you're following along. And then we'll come back and have another video to prepare the unadjusted trial balance, which is instruction number three.